Before you can begin intercepting and tracking, you'll need to know where you want to go. Since you're flying on instruments, hopefully you've already got a route planned or have at least been assigned one by ATC. I'd like to think you're not just out there wandering around in the clouds. Let's start by looking at how to intercept and track to or from a VOR. Once you've got a station in mind, you'll need to make sure that it's tuned in, being received, and that the station is working properly. It's not going to do you much good if the VOR is down for maintenance. First, and hopefully most obvious, you're going to want to tune the station in on your nav radio. Set the frequency published on the charts in either the nav 1 or nav 2. The G1000 makes life easy because it verifies the signal for you. Once the system recognizes that the signal is good, the three-letter identifier for the station will be displayed next to it. Double check that the identifier is what's published on the chart to make sure that you actually have the right station tuned in. If you like the sound of garbage trucks backing up or are flying in an airplane without a G1000, you can also verify that the station is working properly by listening to its Morse code identification, like we did back in the old days. Do this by turning on the appropriate nav radio on the audio panel. Next, push the nav radio volume knob so that ID is displayed next to the frequency. Finally, adjust the volume to a comfortable setting. After verifying the Morse code broadcast matches what's printed on the navigation chart, you can turn off the ID mode and deselect the nav radio on the audio panel. Once you know you've got the right station tuned in, it's time to figure out where you are relative to that VOR. You've got to know where you are before you can figure out how to get where you want to be. Start by turning the airplane to parallel your desired course. Now press the course button just below the COM frequency selector on the G1000. The CDI should snap to center. The head of the needle is now displaying your course to the station and the tail is showing the radial from. Now that you know where you are, you can figure out how to get to where you want to be. Since you've either got a flight plan or instructions from ATC, you should already know the course to the station you should be tracking. From here, with a tiny bit of math, you can calculate your intercept angle. Start by finding the difference between your current course 2 and your desired course 2. Double that difference and you've got your intercept angle. As a side note, that angle should never be less than 20 or more than 90 degrees because neither one of those is going to help you very much. Let's take a look at an example. Right now you have determined that you are on the 360 degree course to the VOR. You want to be on the 330 course to the station. The course is to the right. 360 minus 330 equals 30. Double that and you've got a 60 degree intercept angle to get you over to that course you're hoping to track. Rotate the course selector knob to your desired course of 330 and you'll notice the CDI will be to the right hand side of your miniature airplane, indicating your left of course. With that in mind, Add that intercept angle to your desired course to get your intercept heading. Use the mnemonic LARS as an aid in selecting an intercept angle. Left, add, right, subtract. If you're left of course, add the intercept angle. But if you're right, subtract. Since you're trying to intercept the 330 course, adding 60 degrees gives you an intercept heading of 030. Turn your airplane to that heading. As you begin your course intercept, you'll see the CDI begin to slide towards the center. And as the needle begins to center up, turn back to the left to a heading of 330. The rate of closure will depend on how close you are to that VOR. The further away you are, the slower that's going to happen, and vice versa. You can judge how far you are from the course based on the dots on the face of the CDI. With a VOR, a full-scale deflection to the left or right will happen when you're 10 degrees or more off course. Once you've intercepted the course, you'll need to adjust for the wind conditions to keep from drifting off course. This process is a lot like flying ground reference maneuvers, only now you don't have a visual reference to see your drift. You'll have to include the CDI in your scan and adjust as the airplane is blown off course left or right. As the CDI drifts from center, Re-intercept with a 20 degree intercept angle towards the deflection. Keep that intercept heading until the needle recenters, and then turn back the other direction by 10 degrees. 
Like most days when we're out flying, today there's wind to deal with. Let's just say, for example, it's coming from the west. If we simply point the nose at 330, the airplane will drift to the right of course. That swings the CDI to the left. The closer we are to the VOR, the faster that happens. No matter where we are, though, we need to stop that drift and get ourselves back on course. So, let's follow the procedure and turn 20 degrees toward the CDI. As we do, the CDI will stop moving to the left and hopefully begin swinging back towards center. As it lines up with our course, we should take out half of our correction. So we'll turn back to the right 10 degrees. That gives us a magnetic heading of 320 and a wind correction angle of 10 degrees. Hopefully that will be enough to overcome the wind. We're just going to have to keep an eye on the CDI and see what happens. If the CDI should move off center again, we're going to use a smaller correction. This time, we'll make a 10 degree turn to re-intercept and then take out half of that correction once the needle recenters. This bracketing procedure is the most efficient way to maintain your course. With higher winds, you may have to start with more than 20 degrees of correction, but the procedure remains the same. It's also important to remember that your intercept rate will change depending on how close you are to the VOR because math. Intercepting and tracking GPS courses is actually very similar to VORs, but there are still a few differences that you should be familiar with. The most obvious difference is how you set up the G1000. Be sure that the GPS is selected as your nav source on the PFD. You should have a Magenta CDI. Since there's no radio to tune, you'll have to enter the fix that you're planning on using into the GPS. If you're building this from scratch and not using a fix in your flight plan, start by pressing the Direct To button and typing in the fix. Once you've got the right one selected, press Activate. The CDI should automatically center and point to the current course to your GPS fix. Now that you know where you are relative to the fix, you'll just need to select your desired course. You'll have to select OBS mode, and then you can turn your course selector knob to your desired course. From here, your intercept procedure is exactly the same as it was for a VOR. Figure out the difference, double it, calculate your intercept heading, turn the airplane, and intercept the course. The course itself is a little different than that of a VOR though. While full scale deflection on a VOR is 10 degrees to either side, the GPS actually has three different sensitivities depending on where you are. When you're more than 30 nautical miles from either the departure or destination airport, the receiver operates in en route mode. In this mode, the CDI depicts a total course width of 10 nautical miles. So Full CDI deflection equals 5 nautical miles. Within 30 nautical miles of either the departure or destination airport, the receiver operates in terminal mode, and total course width becomes 2 nautical miles. So, full needle deflection equals 1 nautical mile. Finally, within 2 nautical miles of the final approach fix, inbound, the receiver automatically enters approach mode. Total course width becomes 0.6 nautical miles and full-scale deflection equals 0.3 nautical miles. These mode changes happen automatically in most cases, so be sure to double-check your current mode. That will help you figure out how quickly these intercept and tracking corrections will need to happen. The final type of course you'll need to know how to intercept and track is the localizer. Since the VOR receiver is used on the localizer course, the assumption is sometimes made that interception and tracking techniques are identical when tracking localizer courses and VOR radials. Remember that the CDI sensing is sharper and faster on the localizer course. You'll start this process much like you did the VOR. Tune and identify the localizer. You'll want to make sure you're tracking the right course. Unlike a VOR, you've only got one course option with a localizer, so be sure to set the published course with the course selector knob. Because of your close proximity to the localizer antenna, your intercept angle with a localizer course should never exceed 30 degrees. You'll find that the course will quickly become more and more sensitive the closer you get to the runway, so your corrections will have to be smaller and more accurate as you track down the localizer course. That same bracketing method we used to track VORs, it's going to work great here, but your corrections will happen much more quickly. 
So there it is, intercepting and tracking. Have fun out there, make smart corrections, and be safe wherever you are.